Zazz. Oh, yeah. Bitsy. Woo. And Whipper. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's, what's up? up? Hey, Sarah. Sarah dropped an eek. On okay. the show today, is that in the pot? Hopefully, that's in the pot. Who's used it? Eek? Doesn't I don't know. I don't even know where it came from. Um, <laughs> the other, didn't you do the other day? Oh, shivers. Oh, no. oh, I do oh, say I haven't shivers heard a bit. shivers for a oh, while. I say shivers a bit. Oh, yeah. shiver me timbers. You, you know when I go home on the weekends, I actually say a lot of things that Fitzy says oh, on there. Oh, like no, what? When, what? You mad mongrel? Well, no, I can't even think, but just Something. really weird ma- mannerisms and things, and I think I'm morphing into you. Um, yeah, sheesh has been used on the show as sheesh. well quite a bit lately. Yeah. Sheesh. Um, See, but- I think I'm morphing into you, says. Because mm-hmm. I come in in sort of my pyjamas each morning on the weekends. I'm in my pyjamas. I'm feeling quite sloppy. And then I find myself reading a bit of e-news about Kanye and Bieber. And then I go, oh, my God, I'm turning Bieber. into Sarah. Hey, you know how Bieber. my toilet broke at home and you said yeah. to me, FaceTime me and I'll help you fix mm-hmm. it? I said to Will yesterday, who's five, Yeah. I, he goes, what are you doing with that bucket? And I said, I'm trying to fix the toilet. And I said, do you know who we need to call? He said, who? And I go, Whipper. And he said, does he like playing with who? Oh, oh no. I would never, yes. ever yes. suggest that the old mud dragon is a pastime oh of mine. Oh, gosh. Well, uh, there he has. He's been on this show for 12 years. The toilet it's fixed. Um, is the toilet fixed, yeah, though, Sarah? Yeah, it is. Thanks. Well, thanks very much. I am good at playing with poo, as it turns out. The old show bag over here. What do you mean by that? All of <laughs> It's not even funny. Spell it out. Yeah, I get it. S H O W. Um, enjoy the podcast. <laughs> the, the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Oh, this is a big one. Sarah, you could be in a bit of trouble here, but I didn't know this. But dogs know when you're having an affair. Hmm? And they use body language to tell the truth. What do you mean? So apparently. Their tail goes straight up. Apparently, cheaters use their dogs quite a bit. 60% of cheaters have said that they say to their partner, I'm taking the dog for a walk. We know what that means. Oh. And that means they're going to meet up with their lover. Mm hmm. So hang on, how does the dog react? Well, the, if you're taking the dog with you, apparently the dog knows the smell of the lover. And apparently their body no, no, no. Whoa. apparently their body language changes massively. Aww. Now, if you are, I mean, this is for anyone out there that's suspecting that their partner is cheating. Maybe you should see the body language in your dog as well, just to see if there's something different there. Yeah, if well, the dog looks angry that he's just seen you steal his mating move. They, uh, that's nice. A dog expert said... Hey, that's mine. Mentally, dogs don't understand the concept of cheating, but they can sniff out where you've been or who you've met, what you've done, all from minutes sent particles deposited on your clothing. She also revealed that your mm. four-legged friend can read you through minute facial expressions, eye contact and body postures. Your dog certainly knows where, you're, you're, where you've been. Their sense of smell is their superpower. This is the thing. She said, I've got a Cocker Spaniel who's attached to my hip for pretty much the entire day when I'm at home, but since I've started seeing my new lover who he's never met, his behaviour has changed and I'm petrified my husband's going to notice. How interesting. Isn't it it amazing? When I started dating Gary... Winnie went and urinated on the pillow of the... Like, looked me in the eye and weed on the pillow. And he's very well house-trained. What, Marty's territory? Oh, yeah. But not on my pillow, on one of the housemates' pillows. Hey, Gary. Oh, Get out of here before this ends up on you. It was. It was like the. I went up. I watched him. He got up in the bed. He looked me in the eye, lifted his leg, and then walked yeah. out. Didn't you? You and Gary had, okay. had a session on Whipper's um, okay. couch. Can you not say you? it like that? He might be in the car with my kids. Winnie, did Winnie leave something on the couch? <laughs> I'll that tell you what. Awesome Those stains gift. were already there. When you were house sitting at my place, right? Oh, here we go. Not only it's been did, a while. did the couch get completely <laughs> abused. No, it didn't. When I got home and hopped into bed after my holiday. I lay down and I could smell you on my pillow. Well, what? first thing, how did you know my smell? I just yeah. do. I sit next to you and have done for 10 years. I know what you smell like. And it... I went, classic McGill Ray okay. pillow action. No, that was Winnie. And we've, ne- <laughs> and we've never washed the pillow We since. slept in the spare room when I stayed and washed both sets of sheets. Just to be good we don't house guests. We don't no, know. we do we had, the dr- we had the couch steam cleaned. Yeah. That cost oh, a fortune oh. and still didn't get it out. Tommy, I would love a call. Oh, yeah. yeah if you found out that uh, your partner was cheating through a dog. Could or, the dog... Or, or if you found out that your partner was using the dog to go and see their lover. If you came home and the dog was just randomly humping your leg, 
You'd go, where'd you get that from? <laughs> Why were oh, you feeling left out? It it's not like a dog does that because they've watched someone yeah. else do yeah, it. Yeah, they're not gone. parrots. I was left out. You said walkie, and we went round the block to do some more talkie. And, can I... and you hooked up with somebody else. I was left out and had to sit in the corner of the room, so I'm going to come home. And can I just say, if yeah. you're doing it like that with Lisa, you're doing it wrong. Well, yesterday morning. <laughs> just on her leg. Oh. Uh, what are you doing to my leg again? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Could you stop holding on to my leg like that? You're going to throw your back out. Uh, Did the dog give it away? 13, 20, 4, 10. <laughs> oh, Hail Mary, man. Oh, could he get, oh, this, there's a movie in this. A dog is a private investigator wow. <laughs> busting <laughs> cheetahs. That'd be a great movie. Adelaide's giving us a call. Good morning, Adelaide. Morning. How are you guys? Good. Good What's Adelaide. the story about a dog? Yes, I got a story. So my partner had an ex and we had a dog and this dog had never met his ex before. Yeah. But every time we bumped into her on the street, the dog went crazy. Oh, or like, like got, got aggressive Adelaide or just... No, like happy. So excited to see this random person. Oh, because they knew them. Oh. oh. And did you pick that up, Adelaide? A little bit. And I kind of just like, that's weird. But he ended up like just coming forward. And saying, that's my ex. So the wow. dog recognised the ex. Off, yeah. That's so crazy. How long had he been seeing this girl, Adelaide? Uh, I think it was pretty much the entire short relationship. Oh, oh mate, I'm so sorry, but dogs. thank God for the dog. Mate, this yeah, would, exactly. that would be a great mm. movie, a dog with a little private investigator's so, hat. Like a pair of glasses, <laughs> hat and a jacket, getting around the streets, yep. just sniffing or people for clues. Just sticks its paw up and mm. points to the <laughs> spare bedroom. <laughs> They're in there. Yeah, they're in there. And Unclean. then the dog starts humping your leg. Oh. Just to say, that's what they're doing. I'm giving you the heads up. It's time to stop putting off your trips and start celebrating summer with an amazing getaway. Whatif.com has all kinds of accommodation options all around Australia. Check them out on the What If app. What If. It's Aussie for travel. So if you do have a job interview coming up, I, I, I loathe job Why? interviews. Why? Loathe them. What are you worried about? I, I always struggled talking about myself. Self, and I was, uh, you know... The, Don't the, have an issue on this show. The big one... No, no. <laughs> no I was no. going to say. No, no, but you're... Yeah, yeah, true. Well, that's because we take the P-I-S-S out of each other. But, you know, when you have to do it seriously yeah. in a job interview... And the other big one that I always struggle with... Okay, so was at your previous place of employment, was there a problem that you solved and how did you do it? I was like, oh, I, man. I quit. That's I, why I'm here. I've Next question. a jewellery store selling so <laughs> No watches. <laughs> yeah, that was a problem. The batteries kept running just, out on the D model. <laughs> I just changed a battery over and the watch was fixed. <laughs> uh, um, okay. Solved it. Well, there was one the other day, Fitz, if you saw, and I think it was like the best, the one question or it was to do with how you should answer Yeah. if you didn't understand the question. Oh, that's right. They ask a question you don't understand. Mm. They, they know you won't understand. And then you have to say, I'm not sure about that. I need some time to think about it. Can I get back to you on that? one. For Anybody that tries to bumble their way through it doesn't get the yeah, but job. How many to- I, I, I've actually said that in a job interview when someone said, asked me a question. I've said, do you know what? I'm not going to lie. I don't know the answer to that. Oh, Sarah, but how many times can you say that without looking like a doofus? Well, it depends what job you're going for. If it's sort of a philosophical question, right. I think it's okay to say. If was... it's like if this machine blows up, what do you do when you're applying to be a tech? Because that was a triple M, wasn't it, where they said rock, sport, and, <laughs> and you couldn't remember comedy. No, I got that job. Should have stayed men. there. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. So, so, all right, so this is Jennifer Reardon. Now, she has used this three or four times in jobs, and she said it's the, it's the question that I asked them as we're watching winding up the interview okay. and she said look if you're confident to talk about yourself and you can problem solve on the spot she goes this this has got me the job every time she's a bit confident about it but have a listen you guys don't even understand every job i've ever interviewed for where i've said this do your interview be normal whatever before you're done the last question you're going to ask them is something along the lines of are there any concerns that you have about me that we can address like before we end? You guys, they will have concerns. And then that's your time to address them. And then once you're done addressing them, they'll have no concerns. And you will literally get the interview saying you got the job. That's pretty good yeah, to it not bad. It was similar yeah. to what your, your suggestion, Sarah. Yeah. You say, well, look, before I go, I mean, what, what is it you, that you want from me? Mm. Or you basically tell them, can you give me a review yeah, of how I yeah. went? 
And I'll tell you, I'm more than confident to tell you that I can do everything that you ask me to. I mean, for one, you'd be lucky to get honesty from the person doing the interview. No. You'd be I, lucky oh, you to totally get would. That's so, so do you have any lose. concerns? And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, well, you're external. We wanted someone internal. Yeah. You've um, got a nose ring and a tassel on that. your neck. Yeah, and I don't like the job stopper <laughs> on the side of your face. Okay, well, not um, that. And that snake and dagger with, uh, the, with the... Sorry, but Sarah, that mm. hickey that you've got on your neck, we're not really a fan. That is a birthmark. Um, you fits in. So you want me to be honest? Forever. Herpes, coastals. It's all over your face. I don't reckon it's great for the office environment. <laughs> or Sarah could go, well, if you mm-hmm. play your cards right, you could get one as well. I mean, I've I, got oh. a lot of jobs in my time, Fitzy. And, but then, so if you do mm-hmm. get the honest answer, it's quite nice to be able to wrap it up with, all right, well, all your concerns are now solved. Mm. I guess I'm right for the role. That's, do you want to it? Yeah. There's been an article written about it as well off the back of this girl saying, um, do you know what some of the other questions are that you should use yourself? And get on the front foot if you are confident enough. I mean, they're usually asking you all the questions. But if you can chime in with questions like this, mm. I, I can't believe it, but why has this position become available? <laughs> And people they go, keep, oh, a, wow, a she really issue. must want it. People keep <laughs> quitting. There's a what? guy getting done for sexual harassment in sales. Um, what about this one? You know what, guys? This job aligns well with my experience and qualifications, and here's why. That's a lot to oh think God. of, isn't it? Yeah. Here's another one for you. I read about that project on your website. Yeah, yeah always got to check the website first. If someone does turn up, though, and they know something about the brand... Mm. It's impressive. Mm. Do you know what? This is off the what you just said, Sarah. Instead of saying, well, I don't really understand, the you, three words are very, very powerful, they reckon, and that is... I love you. Can you clarify? Oh, yeah, that's good. That buys three you words. some yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. It Clarifies really does. a big word as well. <laughs> I don't know. Whoa. No, it's not. <laughs> well, you're, just going for, you're going for a job as a checkout chick, but can you clarify, can you clarify what you need me to do? <laughs> what about the girl that came in here not long ago um, for an interview to do with, I don't even know what the role was. Anyway, I said to her, did you listen to the show this morning? <laughs> like, you're coming for a job interview with the Fitzy Whipper show. Like, you want to know about the brand, you want to know what we've spoken about in the morning. It was, to me, it's the most simple thing you would do. What was the answer? I played with my cat this morning. <laughs> yeah. You know what? And Sarah, Sarah, you were very lucky to get the job as well. <laughs> The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Let's talk about the Macquarie Dictionary Word of the Year, guys, for 2022. <laughs> Quite often they're not even words these days. They're more terms, aren't yes. they? Actually, the one, the, the, the main one that you're probably going to talk about, I've never heard of it before, and it, but it's a belter. Which so one? The, uh, bachelor's the ro- handbag. The bachelor's handbag. Yep. I've never heard of that. No, I've never heard that used either. What's Which that? Which is mean? the roast chicken bag that you get from the supermarket, isn't it? No, I don't think it is. I don't. I don't. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is. It is. Sorry, I was going on to read. It was talking about a committee here of funny people, clever people. Bachelor's um, handbag. Bachelor's hand. Uh, and How I does do, that make sense? Well, it's that, that's what they eat. Uh, uh, oh, so like the single man single, sort of single man at home always brings home uh, a, a roast chook from oh, yeah. the supermarket. True. And that's an easy meal. But you know what? That's my go-to. If I'm home by myself, just a roast chicken. Oh, you just rip through a chicken. Oh, yeah. some frozen veggies out of the freezer and I am on. If you come home with a roast chicken, you've won the day. Oh, you haven't yet. Oh, my God. And a nice, fresh loaf Mm. of white bread. Oh, my God. Mayonnaise. Mayo, yeah. And I'll have some lettuce with that, too. If I'm feeling outrageous, I'll put avocado on it. That's your bachelor's degustation, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. And you know what? When you've got the roast chicken, you've got to be careful if it's not too hot. I'll slide my fingers, mm. right, mm. over the leg of the chicken yeah. and my thumb down into the groin of the chicken and you take the, the um, leg off with the meat attached to it. And well, That's that, what you do anyway. That fleshy part attached to the leg Primo, mate. I reckon you could set a world record for the deconstruction of a barbecued chicken. I reckon you would be able to do My God. Like two do you, do you rips and the Do you get it cut up gone. or not? No. No, you never get it cut up. Do the every, Let me cut it up. That would be a good idea to do the everyday the everyday degustation, Tommy, where oh, you have ten, ten courses, yeah. and they're only small portions, mm. would you st- but one would be just a roast chook on white bread with a little bit of mayo. Would you start with oh. a can of V and a pie for breakfast? Ooh, oh. That's not bad. For the tradies? The tradies. Tradies degustation. That is not bad. Not bad at all. A roast chicken.
Not bad. Tom, wouldn't it be amazing to see how fast, if we've got 10 people in a room, yeah. hands need to be tied behind your back? Who can finish the chicken first? Oh, oh no. well, it's, how's it gone from the <laughs> <laughs> everyday <laughs> punters degustation yeah. to who can eat a roast yeah. chook the quickest? Just, can I can I throw a late entry in for word of the year because I loved it when we took a call on this show and it was Bel- from a tradie. Balcony? Not balcony. It's balcony, mate. To it's start not album. With. Not album. He told me before the character um, was Elf from Malmac, and I said no, it's Elf. 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 Come on, guys. Hey, Elf. Brian, I kill me. <laughs> oh. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Oh. <laughs> All right, not the guy from Melmac. I love um, that show. Melmac. <laughs> <laughs> A's and E's, very confusing. No, we took a call from a guy who referred to the pokies as a Bricky's laptop. And I loved it. The Bricky's laptop. Yeah, that's, no, mate, that's he was good. busy that on the Bricky's old, laptop. Though. I think that is old. Never been added to the dictionary, in re- Hasn't though. It? Never made Macquarie. Come on, guys. Uh, a couple of other ones that have been mentioned here, which we've spoken about. It's made the uh, official edition. Quite quitting, guys. We all know about that. Oh, yeah, the practice it. of challenging um, the traditional workforce, having the authority to quit but not actually quit. Skin hunger. What's that? Is a term. Desire for loving or friendly physical contact with oh, another. That's... Oh, I've got skin hunger. Ooh. Oh, I don't like no. that. Is that I... like the tushy if, tap? If Why you... is that not made, it says, where you tap, tap Fitzy on the bottom? Well, that's every sporting team does a tushy tap. If, oh, it's a thing. If you if you put that on your Tinder profile, I'm skin up for hunger. a bit of skin hunger. Hey. Yeah, yeah. No one's swiping right to you. Oh, come over here for a bit of skin hunger. <laughs> I'm going to move through a chicken and then move on to you. What about this? Good news, guys. Spicy Cough has made the list. Oh, oh yeah, yes. COVID. Yeah, COVID. Well done. Uh, what else is here? Pirate Tail. Sorry, Pirate Trail. Oh. A trail that has been <laughs> established like or constructed without the required permission. Oh, mountain biking. That's boring. <laughs> goblin Mode. What's oh, goblin is mode? Is that you on a chicken? Oh, is that mode? gobble, a pat- gobble, gobble? A pattern of behaviour characterised by an embrace of intolerance. <laughs> Leave my mum out of this. <laughs> mm. Wouldn't mind buying her a bachelor's handbag, that's for sure. What's boss wear? What about Barbie core? A fashion characterised by all pink colour palette, especially bright pink. So that's when women silly. are getting out there... And I hate to mention gender in 2022. I don't see it, Tom. I've been using the women's toilets a lot. Um, huh? they, they have that's because bu- you can't oh read. Oh, my gosh. And that's <laughs> why you're on your call. second warning. Do you, know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I went, guys, get up with the times. Take the gender signs off the toilets because I don't see it anymore. <laughs> It's a little bit off the top. Oh, scored again. Oh, Sorry. England. Oh, England scored again. <laughs> yeah. Well done. They saved the great. Oh, what are you talking about? The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. A little bit of exciting news that I am happy to tell everybody. Lisa and I are proud to announce we shared a bed last night. What? How mm-hmm. long has this been? Six months? Oh, and the rest. Um, it was been, exciting. No, it's been over a year, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a very long time. We don't sleep in the same bed. I've spoken about that before. But Was it on purpose? Like, had yeah. this been decided tonight it's going to happen? No, Lisa's... Didn't we the bed head. again, did you? And didn't we the bed again. Uh, Lisa's parents uh, are in town. Gotcha. Uh, D&D, Deborah and Dave. Uh, so we had to merge bedrooms. <laughs> and she was back in the marital suite. Were you snoring? I don't know, mate. Um, I don't know. You um, were passed out, were you? Oh, I'd had a couple of reds and a few beers. How annoying. Oh, what do you mean? Yuck. Don't be what like a return that. To, to... Do you know what? It was, I was nervous about it. You know, it felt like the so first, you drank through. first date again. Mm. You know, I wanted to make sure I put on a good show. I put a little bit of aftershave on before I got into bed and made sure that the um, bed was made and the cushions were fluffed and all the preparation. I had the right underwear oh, on, which was really exciting as well. <laughs> Sarah, I'm so <laughs> off with you Why? for tearing a hole in the back of my Banana Republic underpants. Well, like, you only I've have limited one pair. pair. I've, I've got two pairs, yeah. and now one has a hole in the back because you gave me an atomic wedgie. I don't, I don't make them anymore. Because <laughs> no I one do bought make them. them. <laughs> Why have you not bought more? I'm wait- they ship to Australia. Yeah, Jess is organising some undies for oh, me, aren't you, Jess? Again. When are those undies coming? Size 36, yeah? 36. Well, when I bought them for you in Singapore that time on that trip, you were a 34. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> Good to be back in the bed. Oh, Sarah's <laughs> dropped an E. Oh. Wow. Oh. E. E. Better on email. Sheesh. 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 
Don't be a Debbie Downer. Pick up. Um, what was interesting? That's the first oh, eek on the eek. show. Hopefully the last. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, what was interesting was I, I just when I knew we were going to be in Zimbabwe, I thought I had a different idea about what was going to happen last night, and it didn't start well because we went to bed early, going got a big week coming up, yada yada. Let's get into bed. And first off, I was lying on the bed um, as I. You know, if you don't mind me talking about the positions we're in. I was lying on the bed. She was lying on the floor. She had the Zen Chi going, which is where you put your ankles on that thing and it wobbles back and forth. So what does that do? Yeah. The Zen Chi is meant to help any back pain, relieve any stress. And it's an amazing feeling when it stops because it feels like you're melting through the floor. It is good, but it's just not what I saw as our evening moving forward past right. 8.30 last night. What, you lying on the bed and Lisa lying on the floor on the with floor, a vibrating you- device? How long has she been seeing Zen Chi on Zen the side? Zen Chi, lovely guy. Mm. Oh, lovely guy, great cook. She was laying on Zen Chi, and I thought, Zen, get out of here. Come on, mate. Go home to the Chi family. So that was um, a surprising start, because I thought we'd sort of be on the bed together. That didn't happen. Did then, you wear your double mouth guard? On that, no, that I didn't have the double mouth guard. Okay. No. Um, then um, she got off the floor, got into bed, which was great, because I thought, hang on a minute, here we go. How can she resist? She got into her book pretty quickly after that. Um, when I was lying there and I leant over to give her a hug when she was reading, it was a, I'm reading, don't hug me, but my arm slid under the pillow. That's when I found her crystal collection, which I was unaware of. Oh, crystal. Yeah, crystal collection to um, bring the right energy to the bedroom. What? Uh, this I is... suggested BD energy. Well, Sarah, hey, you do a <laughs> podcast with Kathy's into crystals. Yeah, yeah, crystals, she yeah. loves crystals. I'm all across it. I've got hundreds of them. They go in your bras. Look what they, I said, things. look what the kids have done. Why do they bring them in? Oh, no, they're my crystals. Because I thought the kids had collected some rocks. Oh, no. You find them anywhere. So she's then, on the crystal. She's she? on the crystal. <laughs> Um, and I said, gee, if that's what it takes to get into bed with me. <laughs> so are you so offended? Been... Is that... I'm offended at this stage because I'm still lying there almost. Right. Just... I'm nearly You're... dead at this stage, says. She's on the oh. You haven't slept together for a year. She's only slept once in a year. <laughs> in fact, I don't think she did. So she's reading the book with the crystals there. I'm still lying, waiting. And then she leans over to switch out the light. And I went, Phew, showtime. Big guys on. She fires up some sort of giant Toy. egg sitting oh, next to the bed. Oh. And it's like, it, it's like got... Um, oh, air? Like an yeah, air purifier? Yes, it says. Mm. But it's got smoke coming out the top of it or a mist or a steam, like a flavoured steam. Yeah, that's poison. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Okay, this icon of the music industry is in a fair bit of trouble. I'll give it away right now. 81 years of age. Bob Dylan's in a bit of trouble. So, and What's this, he done? Well, Bob Dylan doesn't really want to tour anymore. He, mm. He's over it. Mm. He, he doesn't want to get up and get the old axe out and sing anymore. So he needs to make his money in other ways. So, roads must a man walk down. What a very unique, very unique voice. Extraordinary. Had his own sound, Bob Dylan. You can't deny that. So he's got a new book coming out called The Philosophy of Modern Song, um, which will probably... What are, what are new books these days? Probably about 40, 50 yeah. bucks new in stores. Oh, there. no, 30 oh, bucks. 30, yeah. You can get it for 30 bucks? Yeah. yeah. Or you can get a signed copy from Bob Dylan himself for $890 each. Oh, Robert Dylan. No. <laughs> Robert Dylan? I reckon I'd pay that. <laughs> Why? You wouldn't read it. No, but a signed something of Bob Dylan. Yeah, I mean, he won't be around forever. I mean, so I could go sure. to eBay, I'm sure, and someone's got a T-shirt. There it is there, the philosophy of modern song, Bob Dylan with his signature down the bottom. The thing is, the fans, when they when they received it, um, they didn't realise that it was a computer-generated version of his signature. Oh, no, that's not good enough. <laughs> what do you mean, like DocuSign? No. Yeah, that's not good enough. No way. He's done a DocuSign. <laughs> So do you have to receive the email that says sign here? <laughs> He's come out and said, I am so sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but he was too lazy. That's lazy. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> he was too lazy. Did you... Mm, the smart <laughs> algorithm put this together. <laughs> but anyway, enjoy. I, I, you know, like, I mean, as he got older, he got grumpier, Bob Dylan. And this is the other thing as well. Like my, my, one of my best mates, Coops, his mum, 
Marguerite loved Bob Dylan so much, mm-hmm. and the one thing she never got to see Bob Dylan live. And he would have. When was the last time was he in Australia? Tommy, can you find Ooh. out? And Coops goes, "This is my moment. Like this will be the greatest present I'll ever get my mother." And she was so excited to see yeah. him. And Bob got up and just did like just the performance was lackluster. Oh, he didn't really put too much into it. Bored out of his brain. And he was at, he was at that age where it was just he mm. was done and dusted. I don't want to do this anymore. Just wanted to get back to the home for his early bird mail, it, didn't it's they? Like, you- it's like John Farnham. Quite often people would go to a John Farnham concert and then everyone would be yelling out, play Sadie, play Sadie. And he hates that hates song. It. Hates so it. So quite often you'd hear him just off mic going, piss off, you idiot. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Like, shut up and piss off, yeah, you idiot. he does. He gets a bit... Well, do, you, do, you, do you guys remember We Are The World, which was yeah. unbelievable? This yep. part of Live Aid, Bob Geldof, Quincy Jones put it yes. together, I think. Michael Jackson was in it. You know, We Are the World. It was amazing. Um, so he, out of all of the huge, and there was Michael Jackson, there was Billy Joel. Diana like, Ross. Everybody was there. And yep. this was raising money for African countries. 127 and, million it they was, raised. It was crazy. It was massive. But apparently there was one person who wasn't into it at all, and that was Bob, Bob Dylan. Dylan. <laughs> and re- recently there's been some audio that has been released of Bob Dylan doing his bit on We Are The World. Awesome. And he's just not. So Stevie Wonder's, Stevie Wonder's, on the piano with him, right? And, and he can't be stuffed. Have a listen to Bob Dylan. What's that? <laughs> Do it one more time, Steve. Can you... uh-huh. oh, 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 don't, don't run it yet. It's true, we make a better day. Okay. Just you and me. Listen to this, they praise him here. Yes. Listen that wasn't him. Yeah. Yeah. That was <laughs> Even he knows. Well done. He was off. Oh, we are wow. the world. Yeah, we, we should have seen DocuSign coming back then, shouldn't we? <laughs> we should have seen it. The Fitzy and Whipper Podcast. Lights. Come on. Hilarity. Top trending stories in entertainment this morning. Will Smith has done his first official interview since the slap. So a few months ago, remember, he did a fan Q&A on YouTube. So he obviously addressed the slap. But this is the first sit-down official interview. It was with Trevor Noah's Daily Show in the States. He's got a good show. He does have a good show. They are obviously friends. But Trevor Noah was still going to ask him the tough questions. This was one of the comments Will made about how he felt about the situation. I was going through something that night, you know. Not that that, you know, justifies my behavior yeah, at all. No, I would just say, you know, you're asking what did I learn? And it's that we just got to be nice to each other, man. You know, it's like, it's hard. And I guess the thing that was most painful for me is I took my heart and made it hard for other people. You know, right. and it's like I understood the idea where they say hurt people hurt people. Yeah. No, nah, it, it was, you know, it was a lot of things. It was the, the, the little boy that watched his father beat up his mother. You know, it's, uh, you know, all of that just bubbled up yeah. in, in, in that moment. That's not who I want to be. So that sort of stuff we'd all kind of heard before, and that was how he explained it. He did go on to tell a bit of an interest, gave an interesting insight on the night that it happened. When he got home, his nephew was at the house, who's a little boy, and this was what he said. Stayed up late to see his Uncle Will, you know, and we're sitting in my kitchen, and he's on my lap, and he's holding the Oscar, and he's just like, why did you hit that man, Uncle Will? I had to humble down, you know, and realize that, that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a flawed human. Wow. 
Do you know what a mate of mine that's read his book said? I completely understand where he's come from. That's what Trevor Noah sort of said as yeah. well. Having read your book, I, I, I get it. I, I get I it. Don't, yeah. Because he drew a line in the sand because he was picked on. He saw what his dad was like as well. And he drew a, li- drew a line in the sand and said, no one is ever going to pick on my family. Yeah. I'm, it's not my family's not going to be treated like I was growing up. Doesn't excuse it, no, but it certainly this is a person who we all knew. Like this was a build up. Yeah, comes from a lifetime of funny bullying guy, and trauma. entertaining guy. What do you do he's it again? Stuffed, then that's the nah, question. He stuffed up big time. He yeah. did, and he's got a new film coming out. I think it's called Emancipation, and he's really concerned. Not for, I mean, sure, but I think not for his success because that's sort of written in stone already that everyone's a bit off him. But obviously, all the other people in involved in this film that was made before this incident happened and they're now going to suffer because people may not go and see it because they're not into Will Smith anymore. Mm. Well, you know what? I mean, everybody feels bashed around the ears from his music over the past few years. I, mean, good, man. No, I liked his I can't music. I can his music. Summertime. Summertime. Stick to movies, man. And Men in black, people. baby. <laughs> you oh, love the clap. No. <laughs> the clap Do it. No. You missed, oh, it. missed it. <laughs> God, nothing worse than missing a clap. What? Uh, oh. And again, all right, guys, Adam Sandler, this is funny. He was receiving an award at the uh, Gotham Awards, uh, which is a funny one, uh, last night, and he stood up and basically had a bit of a rip on his two teenage daughters who he said had had some involvement or tried to have some involvement in, in an acceptance speech for him. Uh, okay, so unfortunately, I didn't, uh, like many of uh, you out here tonight, I've been too busy to write a speech, so um, I told my daughter, Sadie and Sonny, who were 16 and 14, I didn't write a speech, and they said uh, phrases like rude and you're mean. I said, well, daddy's f-ing tired, you know, daddy f-ing works hard, calm down. They were like, can we write your speech, daddy? So you got something to say? I said, absolutely, it'd be nice to see you do something other than watch uh, YouTube or go to f-ing Lululemon or <laughs> <laughs> Not happy for the help, awesome. Adam Sandler. Very awesome. funny, yeah. Finally, Billy Joel. Guys, he's in town. Yes. This is awesome. He took a Sydney Harbour cruise yesterday with his family. Good weather for it yesterday. But disappointing, he was sucking on a vape the whole time. Do you know what flavour it was? No, I don't. Was it cherry? I mean, not to tell the guy, he's 73, but... No, so he doesn't drink anymore, Billy, does he? It's, you know, the word, It's he's teasing us because he's in Sydney. I know. But They're he's only performing. playing Melbourne. You don't want to go to Melbourne, you just want to be here, Billy. Come in and do a red room. Just Tommy, in the kitchen. see yeah. if Billy Joel wants to do wrap-up of the week. Oh. Can you imagine? I've I'm already a, looked in Dean Lewis mate, for Friday. I'm, Scrap. I'm at the park hide on Saturday. <laughs> It looked like he was staying there. Yeah. I'll meet him in the lobby at 5 o'clock, Billy, if you're listening. We'll and sort out wrap-up. Right. We're going to wrap to Uptown Girl today. Yes, we are. Love Off it. you go. Oh. Start wrapping now. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Let's talk about cooking. Uh, there's a beautiful couple by the name of Gemma and Ed. Uh, they're in the UK and they went on a show called Dinner Date where you have to cook for the person that's oh. coming around. You've got to impress them with your culinary skills. What? They enjoy the meal that you've cooked for them and then you chat about things and see how it goes. What's the other one? Who's dining? Who's oh, coming to dinner? Who's coming to dinner? That's a mm. great show set. Yeah. Is that what we recorded once? No. We did a, a show with... Um, Huey, didn't you do? Down Ready, Steady... Oh, oh, no, no, was, yeah. I think you took over from Huey for a couple of weeks. <laughs> no, no, no. I was a stunt double. Um, no, we went round to um, Sophie Faulkner's place. No, that was just for that was for a feed. <laughs> no, we filmed something. I played the guitar. You had a bow tie on. Was it come dine with me? Yeah, come dine with me. Yeah. They go around to celebrity houses, and you got to host oh, a dinner party. Was that yeah. Me? yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. Yeah, so good. Yeah, who's coming to dinner though is a couple, isn't it? And they cook for two other couples. Yeah, I think so. And they get a bit loose. Mm. They have a few wines, mm. and then there's always a fight at the end of the show. It's a great concept. Awesome. My kitchen rules. Another one. I mean, the cooking shows have been the flavour of the month. Pardon the pun. Can't even find my bell. I don't know where Smallsy's put it. No. Thank you. Uh, anyway, what happened here was Gemma and Ed had such a good time, and on the night he did a beautiful meal. Um, he did a Thai curry and then a filo pastry dessert, and she was blown away. Can't go wrong with a Thai curry, can you? No. Green or red? I don't know, mate. I wasn't there. I haven't seen the show. Interestingly enough. After that meal, they went, I need more of this. The two of them hooked up, got married, were together for nine years. Wow. Must have been a good curry. That is beautiful. Yeah. What a beautiful story. Then they broke up. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're, Dramatic breathing. He's starting to lose it. They've, bro- they've yes. broken up because since they appeared on the show that night, Ed hasn't cooked for her once. Oh, that is not why they broke up. In Come nine on. years. Come on. That represents he giving was up in general. Falsely misled, wasn't she? I know. But this is. guy's a great chef. He's practiced enough. That's why he's nailed this dish. And I can't believe that I've found a man that seems to be talented in every area. Do you know what I? This do. is phenomenal. I, I actually I read this story too, and and I feel you're upset about it. I, well, I was upset. Yeah, you're upset. You know what? I looked back, and I, I'm trying to think the last time I cooked for BJ. Yeah, oh, you exactly. do a barbecue, and, you know, and don't I you? didn't. Oh, well, but you know, I just cook the meat. But that's that's quite simple. But like a proper meal. Mm. Like I haven't done a golden honey mustard chicken tonight for ages. <laughs> and isn't she worse off for it? <laughs> and the she wants it every night. That went into that was unbelievable. Really, just from the jar is into the your, pan. Is that your You've signature? Got to make sure that the, the, the jar sauce is fresh. Yeah, like buy it in date. I've always got it fresh. Never okay. had it old. I don't know how you do it, mate. I would go to some of the most exclusive markets around oh, Sydney why? to find that, that that chicken tonight, and you'd bring it home. <laughs> And the next thing you know, happy families. If only he'd done that, Fitz. He didn't do anything. She said he did the dishwasher quite well afterwards and he helped out around the house. That's, that's enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can't both be doing everything all the time. But apparently it became an issue. She kept saying, well, it'd be nice if you change things up every now and then and maybe you cook me dinner. Nine years later, still nothing. See you later. Relationship done well, and that, dusted. That was first impressions and he impressed her with yeah. her, his cooking. You should continue that. No, 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 no. The things that you impressed BJ with on your very first date, you're not still doing them. It's called time, and then you lose interest in making an no, effort. I you am. make an effort in a different way. You don't make an effort. Full stop with poor Gary. I have to that hear about is it. rubbish. He's in my ear blasting me as if I'm trying to be like I'm the messenger Excuse sitting next me. to you for three hours a day trying to get words Gary, through to you. Gary, who hit on who last night? Thank you. Oh, <laughs> eek. And he said, <laughs> and he said no. <laughs> The Fitzy and Whippers Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.